Hey everyone, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we've got a video about a specific technique used by Andrew Sheps in his mixing, one of his many parallel processes that he uses in mixing. And this is a parallel drum distortion channel or drum dirt channel that uses two tools. Today we're gonna go over how to use it the way he does using the specific tools he uses and also how you might be able to recreate that same tone using the stock plugins you might have in your DAW. So first of all, I'd like to listen to the drums by themselves. These drums are not mixed at all. This is just raw drum tracks with a rough balance. So while you saw the processing happening, I have that channel muted right now, so you're not getting any of the processing in there. So the first tool that Andrew Sheps uses in his parallel process here in his drums dirt channel is Trash 2 from Isotope, which is a filtering, mangling, uh, dynamics plugin that can pretty much take a signal and destroy it and mangle it in all kinds of creative and interesting ways. There are a bunch of different processes you can apply in Trash 2. The first one here is the actual Trash algorithm or distortion algorithm itself. If you want to take a screenshot here, if you have this tool to kind of get all the settings, go for it. Uh, we pick Nasty Boy in stage one for the distortion. You've got the shape that's given here using all of these different settings, the pre and the driver set at a certain spot. I'm not going to go over every single control. You can take a look at it and copy it if you'd like to. The second one, the filter section. You can see we're not doing anything really on the first three bands. I mean, a slight push at the clean peak here at 755. But this is the one where we pull a lot of the upper mids out at 3.5K or so, about 5.4 dB. You're seeing that right here. And then a huge low pass filter cutting off all that top end there. That's the filter. And that goes into the next process, the dynamic section, which uh, compresses the signal heavily. So what this ends up sounding like is a really heavily compressed sort of drum room mic sound. It's what it really sounds like. After that, you're going to get a lot of compressed distorted cymbal wash. It doesn't sound great. So what we do then is have another EQ. This can be a stock EQ here. where We suck out all of those upper mids. We're taking out... 16 or so db at 3.36k with a pretty wide bandwidth just to bring out all of that nasty cymbal sound i'll turn that on and off with the process engaged and you'll hear why you need to do that so those two things in process distortion right here filtering compression and one more eq to suck out that upper mid-range cymbal nastiness and that is the basic process so here is just the dirt channel by itself It doesn't sound great on its own, and it's not supposed to. This is going to be used in conjunction with your raw dry tracks or your normal drum tracks to kind of get some energy, some, some bigness to the, the drum sound. And it's really helpful to automate mute in this so that you only bring it on during choruses, for example, when you want to really have the impact of the drums pop out even more. So what I'm going to do now is solo up the drums again, and I'm going to slowly bring this fader up for the drum distortion drum dirt channel you can hear how it really helps things pop out even more off I mean, the drums just get bigger. They really open up using that one simple process. Now, let's say you don't have the Isotope Trash 2 plugin. And what you want to do is sort of recreate this on your own. I tried to go about doing this using the stock Studio One plugins, and I'm sure you could do it in your DAW as well. The first one I did is engage a distortion plugin. For Studio One, it's that red light disc. And I tried to match the type of distortion that Trash 2 offered. After, and if you were in Pro Tools, for example, you could use Lo-Fi or something like that to achieve the same effect. Then I went into an EQ plugin, the Stock Studio One EQ, did the same filter that came in Trash, that uh, tight Q pulling out some upper mids, rolling off the high end, a slight boost before the upper mid cut. I matched settings on the compressor to try to really get some heavily squashed compression going on here. And just copied the same exact settings in that last EQ that we had on the Pro EQ in the first process. So when you put these four together, 
using all stock plugins, here's the sound you get all by itself. Just to refresh your memory, here was the one with the actual plugins that Andrew Sheps uses. And back to stock plugins. So while this process is not exactly the same as what's going on in the Sheps and you can't match the tone exactly, you'll get you in the same ballpark and you'll be able to fade that in and sort of beef up your drums when you want to. And it would be as simple as going to your channel here, finding where we have that mute automation, and then just unmuting and muting during choruses to help open things up and bring that drum sound out a lot. So again, the Sheps process is isotope trash into a stock plug-in, EQing out that upper mid range, and we can kind of make that same thing happen using a distortion plug-in, a couple of EQs and a compressor stock plug-in. And the goal of this is just to beef up your drums and make them really slam and especially in impactful parts of your song. Don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, to let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next one.